All right, what's up, DOW? March podcast. Last podcast before the season. So, last podcast until next, maybe November. But, anyways, we got Vinny Battle of Mente here. Pacific Predator. Clapping it up for Vinny. Vinny and person clapping it up. But, anyways, yeah, we got Vinny here. Last podcast. Hopefully, it's a good one. Next, uh, less than a month from now, it's like, I don't know exactly how many days, it's a little less than a month, so probably 27, 28 days until the, um, prospect game with the rookies coming in, and then the draft, you guys won't get the video until it'll be over a month from now, it'll be the weekend after that, you'll see the videos, but we'll post pictures on the Instagram and everything of, you know, what's going on that day at the prospect game. Should be fun. It's almost time. Probably, me and Jace will probably put the field up here in two or three weeks. Hopefully, it keeps getting warmer. It's almost time. Less than two months till opening day, even. May 6th, mark your calendars. Vinny, how you doing today? Good. You excited to be here? Vinny brought prime, as you guys see. Strawberry watermelon. We're going to do some taste tests on that. Jace, anything to say? Let's get to the taste test. Top tier. That could definitely be my favorite kind of prime. Right now, it stands, I'm saying red. Tropical Punch is my favorite, but I think if I had that, that's the first time I've tried it, that could definitely take first place. What's your favorite, favorite kind of prime, Jace? Ice pop. Benny? Ice pop. Least favorite kind of prime. Let's do that. That's the green kind for his order. Oh, no. yeah. Least here kind of prime. I'm saying grape. I don't like grape. Mine's grape at all. The only kinds I still need to have are orange and lemon lime. There's the only kinds I haven't tried. Jace had orange the other day, but I did not. Jace can tell you how orange was. Pretty good. Anyways, I think this is the first podcast since the cold trade, I believe. Now we're posted. Yeah, it is. No, I don't know. I just re watched the other podcast and you talked about it on that. Okay, then it's not the first podcast since the cold trade. But still. And since it never happened, I'll just get it out there to you guys. Um. The Seahawks and Bulldogs were actually in a talk of a trade. Uh, Ruben was going to trade Jackson all of his picks next year for the Seahawks' fourth pick this year. So Ruben went ahead, picks one, four, five, seven, and maybe ten. But it didn't work out. Jackson said he was not giving that fit, that fourth pick up. He said he's going to need some draft picks this year. Anyways, uh, this year we were thinking about, me and Ruben have been talking about it at least, maybe for opening day we'll either get like jersey patches for this season for the Seahawks that say like 2022 World Series champions, or we'll put up like a what do you call it? A banner. A banner on the fence. Like it's not gonna be huge. Like maybe one little square of the fence, like maybe like that wide, that tall, not that big. And just put it up on the fence, raise it up on the fence on opening day, 
We'll see. Maybe throw all the seeds in. And then put another one up, and then another one up, and then another one up. Then you do it again. I will say, though, for the um, World Series this year, we're talking about an idea maybe getting jersey patches, like, for both teams that are in the World Series. So that'll be neat. Still not going into details on where we're going this year. But, you said you would this podcast. But I'm not going to do it this podcast. But maybe we'll make like a 45 second video announcing it. Or we'll probably, if anything, I'll just say it like a month from now in the season trailer. That's probably what I'll do. I think you guys are going to be pretty thrilled. We're going to three, three different fields. There was a possibility at one time that we could uh, went to four different fields, but it doesn't look like we're going to. Our, the one we posted on our YouTube uh, community section a couple months ago in the fall. But I don't think we're going to go there to play a series because we just found better fields than that to play a series on. So, yeah. But anyway, since you haven't been here for the podcast, what's your, what's your thoughts on, you know, what teams are going to look like this year? What teams are going to be decent? What teams are going to be bad? The bad team right now, I have the Bulldogs. I think the Bulldogs will be bad again. Not bad, bad. Yeah, not record. like last year. They're going to have a better record. Yeah. The Seahawks, I feel like they're having a down season. And as you guys know, if you follow the Instagram, um, if you don't, you probably don't know. But uh, anyways, Ethan Lang on the Western Wildcats. Jace's accomplice, the Robin to his Batman, if you will. Uh will be out for most likely the first two series of this season. Uh, due to a sports related injury he suffered he already said a couple that. weeks ago. What do you mean I already said that? In the last podcast. No, I didn't. Or just like two weeks ago. I said I was, injury. I know, I said about his injury, but I didn't say about how he was supposed to be out. Originally he was supposed to be back for even spring training and everything for Wolf Ball, but now it's looking like he will probably miss the first half of the season. But comment down below. I think we should definitely give Ethan a freebie to be in the All-Star game in July and the Home Run Derby as his first games back. And give him maybe a like a special entrance whenever he plays the game in the All-Star game. Comment down below if you think that would be a good idea. I vote All-Star Game and I'll have run their game. Yeah. Okay. And like, just give him a free start. And then mm -hmm. announce mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. from, announce, yeah, announce everybody from both teams and then give a special announcement for Ethan. Because Ethan was actually, I think I've already said this on the last podcast, so I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of details about it, but Ethan was actually in like, serious condition in the hospital at one point during that injury. So <laughs> So then I guess we'll well, Jace, I don't want to ask you this question yet because you got to see the prospect game and the draft and everything. But well, what's your thoughts on will, what you would do in the starting lineup? We, will we see Max and Cole in that starting lineup on opening day? Will we see some rookies? What, what's it going to look like? I can't tell you. I know what. Max would be in that starting lineup. He would have been in the blues. Yeah. What if you get two dynamic rookies? And every prep, and if Ethan Hughes has a real fast recovery, he'll be in the starting lineup. And then I have 
At least for now, I know for sure I'm going to at least have one rookie in there. Max will be my BH. But if Ethan don't get back, then it'll be me, the rookie, and Max. This rookie was a powerhouse last year. As Vinny well knows, we have no idea what the starting lineup could look like between me, him, Tucker, and the rookie. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll find out. So. I just always tell Cole if he starts like saying something to me, I have to have an answer in there. So I was telling him, looks like you're finding your way to free agency. <laughs> Cole is still looking for his first career home run in the <laughs> football. Going into his third year, he's literally played as many, well, not quite as many. Actually, yeah, he's played as many Wiffle Ball games in T.O.W. Wiffle Ball as me and Jace, well, not Jace, because Jace was the World Series this year. As me and Jace, and still hasn't been anything to him play. Comment down below if you think Cole Fletcher will hit his first home run this season. Vinny says no. Jace, what do you think? I'd say it's going to be tough because with the fences moving back even further, it's not like we're moving back like 10 feet or anything. We're moving back 3 feet. Just an arm's length, really. Everywhere. And you guys know, I might have already said this on a previous podcast, I'm not sure, but the fair foul poles that were spread out from the fence this year, maybe a 5 foot gap in there and uh, balls that went through there were ground rule doubles. That would not be a problem this year. We're fitting the uh, fair foul poles with the fence right along it. So the field will be a little bit narrower. narrower. It'll be easier to get out in, a, in that aspect. Um, the bases are going to be longer, so that'll make it a little bit easier for people to get out. The fence is going to be further. We're just trying to... We had some high scoring games last year. Granted, that was because the Bulldogs um, weren't great, but we're trying to get the games a little bit more low scoring than what they were this year. I think it, we should be all right, though. And we're let, we don't have an official, official speed limit, but we're letting more stuff fly than we did last year. And believe me, Ruben knows that call with Ruben in the Preds Wildcats game that the speed warning that led to the walk off home run for Ethan. That won't happen again. Speed warning decisions will not decide games, big games especially. Unless, like, somebody blatantly chucks one as hard as they can at the strike zone. But I don't think anybody's dumb enough to do that. What do you guys think about the rule changes, Jason? Well, not the rule changes, just the few, few dimension changes. You don't like them. Why? Why? First, there's going to be that big hole in the grass where the other bases were, and the field's going to be no, narrow. No, no, listen. You're going to have a whole new line of paint. Everybody's not going to be used to it. It's going to be weird. For the past three years, we've done the same thing, so I would change it up. It's just weird. Why don't you wait till we have more people in the league to change it? It's going to work well, trust me. Everybody would have to. And those holes from the bases this year will not be on the field. Why are they still there now? No, listen, because the field, when it narrows, they'll be outside of the fair foul line. Okay, but still, what if somebody's going for a foul ball, foul ball outside of it and they trip it back? They wouldn't trip it. Plus, the grass would grow back in it in the spring once the base is on it. Last year, the grass didn't grow back on it in the spring because the base was sitting on the ground. Well, you see the two to three. And the, the pitching yeah, mound stays the same place. Next year, that'll move back like three feet, probably. Why don't we just make a home in the field? And hopefully, hopefully, next year, we will um, have six teams in the league. That's our hope. That would be nice. We're hoping to add Northern Nighthawks and Atlantic Avalanche, like we've already said before. Northern Nighthawks would probably be green and blue. Uh, Atlantic Avalanche would be red and white. 
because we do not have a red team in our league, which I think is interesting. I think That's not a guarantee that that'll happen. That just kind of depends on how many people we get in the draft next year. If we get more, if we get anywhere from like around eight, we probably will expand. But if we get like five or less, then I'd say we'll stay with four, maybe five. We might go up to five. That would be an option. That means there only be like a couple draft picks. Yeah, we might go up to five. That would be an option. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I think if we expand to six, we do. The first two teams get a bye. Oh, the other teams get eliminated. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if we would do every team well, well, makes well, playoffs and first two teams get a bye or if. The two best teams get a bye and then there's one. Yeah, but if you yeah. do the first two teams get a bye, it'd be like, no, it doesn't last longer. Yeah, yeah. then you'd have like three, yeah. the three seed would play the six seed. It kind of look like an actual yeah. bracket. In two. Instead of just semifinals. But hey, we're growing. TW Wiffleball is growing. It's going from like whatever we had 12, 11 players last year. It's going up to around 20 some this year. We're traveling. I'll just say two of the games that we're playing in a special field for will be in our state. I'm not saying our state because I don't want to give away the election. But. Yeah, there's a chance you could have figured out where we're at already. But, um, yeah, there, two of them are going to be in our state. Another one is what? Guys, four or five states away on a very special field that you guys are going to recognize. Believe me on that. You're going to know it. It's going to be great. It'll be a road trip. That's all. Awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a road trip. A road trip. All right. Five plus hours. More than that. Seven or eight. I'm not trying Seven to say eight hours. Out. We were trying to go to Vermont, where MOW played at that thing, but that's not going to work it's out. Already all booked. It's all booked up. We're not going to get to go there, but you guys are going to love the places we're getting to play. It's a step up. You know, get us more subscribers. Hey, spread it on to your friends, man. You know, we're. We're trying to get bigger and better things down here. And if you guys uh, saw the Instagram post or the YouTube post in the, in the community section of the picture of the draft board and what it's going to, that was posted a couple days ago and what it's going to look like on April 1st when we have the prospect game in the draft, um, the 9 and 10. Picks are not guaranteed. They said if possible because right now we had two people that drew out of the draft. We have eight people in it right now. We're trying to work on getting two more so we have those ten filled up. But that's not a guarantee. We're working on nine. We're probably going to have a ninth person here within a couple days. Uh, but the tenth person we're not sure about yet. The ninth pick. If possible, would belong to the Seahawks. Tenth pick, if possible, would belong to the Bulldogs. So, Jace, what's your thoughts on having on those two picks you're gonna have, three and six? What are you looking for? What do you want? What's some main aspects you're looking for in a player? Really? I know the first one I'm looking for. I just don't know the, everybody in the draft. If you tell me them real quick, I could say. What aspects do you need then? Like, well, what do you want on your team in the draft pick? Anything in particular or just a good player that can bring it over to you? Well, okay. Try to bring this across as nicely as I can. Cole is already going to be our energy guy. He'll, he'll pump us up while he is. And Max. Max gets pumped up too. Well, yeah. And then. And then the rookie. That I know I'm getting now, I still nobody picks him, which I've talked to people and they said they probably won't end up picking him. Is he can pitch, he can field very well, and he hits bombs. So who will get their picks? 
Bulldogs, yes. The Bulldogs have one, five, and seven. And possibly ten. They could have Bulldogs could have four of the ten picks in the draft. Ruben got rid of uh Cole, released Jesse Daniels to free agency. So right now, actually, Ruben is the only player on the Bulldogs until the draft. But he's gonna get three, maybe four players in the draft. It's gonna be a team with a lot of rookies. I mean, I guess you never know. If those rookies turn out good, we could really see a change Bulldogs team this year playing for a championship. We really could. And otherwise, I don't even know if I'm gonna get. I don't even know if I'm gonna use that sixth pick yet. I'm not sure we're gonna trade it away for just to trade it away or not because I don't want to end up having six people on our team. I don't need six people because I don't want two people sitting on the bench. Up well, you can get them there until. Until Ethan comes back, and then you can release one of them in the free agency. But that will feel bad doing that. Yeah, it's going to be different. We're going to have people that will not play innings this year. I mean, everybody's going to get a chance to play at some point throughout the season. Plenty of points throughout the season. Like, I know for my team, the Prebs, we're going to have four guys. That's why I don't want a whole bunch of people. I want four guys. And my hope, you know, me, Vinny, and Tucker can all play ball. Our draft pick is going to be a second pick. It's going to be somebody that can play ball. So we're going to have four strong guys is what we're really going to have. Everybody's going to get plenty of playing time. Everybody's going to see the field plenty. We're going to bat everybody as long as everybody's, as long as everybody plays like they're capable. I mean, everybody's going to, it's going to be rotation in and out of the outfield and, you know, just depending on who might be pitching, depending on the situation, really stuff like that. What do you mean in backup pitch? That's yeah. That's my biggest thing. I want a backup pitcher. Vinny, Vinny's decent. Tucker's decent. Max last year was actually <coughs> Max last year was a really good backup. He had a decent ERA. It was only five or six, which I guess for Wiffleboro and especially in early, he's pretty good. I know Tucker's decent when he didn't pitch one for me last year. He did. No, he didn't. He did. He pitched, he pitched against oh, us. No, he he struck me out one time. He pitched against Ethan pitched against you guys. And Tucker did. Trust me, he did. He struck me out one time. I remember it. Because mm -hmm. when I stepped up to the plate, I told him there was no way he was going to strike me out, and he did. And with the mic'd ups coming up, that'll be. We're not. It's not going to. Nobody's going to be mic'd up in the prospect game. Um, but, and then we are, after the prospect game, we'll have two weekends of practice for each team. We'll probably take some pictures and post on the Instagram, whatever. Um, and then we'll have the spring training. And then actually in those two weeks off, I'll post those Instagram pictures and I will make the... Make and post the, what's it called? Post them in like a thing like this. Yeah, make and post the what? What's it called again? The trailer. And then we will have spring training. And then I have practice the next weekend. And that weekend that we have practice, the spring training video will get posted. And then it's opening day. So it's getting close. It's getting close. Literally like three or four more weekends until it's time to go out on that field and really start competing, getting practice in. It's time to start grinding. I've been working hard getting my Ruben pitches down. Ruben's, Ruben's been working hard getting his pitches down. Who are you practicing there? Well, once he gets all his rookies. I'm just, I can see how Ruben's going to get all his rookies right now. I'm just Vinny, back to what we were talking about. What do you want to see the Preds get this year? Is a is a rookie like a rookie pick, a pitcher? Pitcher. Yeah. I think that's what we definitely need if we want to, you know, cross the bridge from just being a great team to being a championship team. I mean, I think we already are a championship team, but if we can get a good number two pitcher, we're, we're solidified as a championship caliber best team. Best we'll pick for every series and best bat. Series. We could do that, like give an yeah. honor after every series, best bat flip of the series. And at the end of the season. And like show it in slow mo or something. Yeah. I don't know.
can't tell what it's what I, it looks like 20 something. 25, dang, we only got five minutes left. Five minutes left of the final podcast. Um Yeah, then it's time to worry about season one. What's your favorite moment of any podcast? This yeah, let's go through from here watching. From yeah, here watching. and from you watching too, Vinny. Favorite moment of podcast. Mine has to be whenever Max was up here saying comment it, comment it, stood up, started screaming. If you don't comment, I'm not saying the words, because I'll have to bleep it out myself, but that, that was hilarious. That's my favorite memory of the year. Jace, my favorite podcast memory of the year. When you hung up? When what? When you hung up and when we called you for a second, you hung up. Everybody boo Vinny in the comments for that one. You gotta come up with something. I don't know. And for you guys wondering, Benny's not actually a Pirates fan. Not a bit of a Pirates fan. He just has that hat. Benny Preds. is actually a New Yeah, Benny's wearing that for the Preds. Benny's actually a New York Yankees fan. And hey, I saw today MLW Wiffle Ball. Well, when this video gets out, it'll be tomorrow. Or yes, yesterday. Yes, MLW Wiffle Ball released hats that their players didn't wear during games and that fans can buy. They are a lot of money, but I'm going to get one for Easter here to wear for the season sometimes. I'll wear a headband, a yellow headband I'm getting sometimes. Uh, look, I'm going to be all dripped out this season. I'm going to have a yellow headband on, eye black, the Oakleys. Show Jace the Western here. Show the fans out, the Preds hat. That's the Preds. Well, Vinny will get close you guys into it. That's the Preds hat. Vinny, show Jace the... Uh, Yes. That's the Western Wildcats hat. I don't think we're gonna get those as a league. That's just a bit too much expense. That's a bit too much expensive of a uh, investment for our league to buy thirty-five dollar hats for every single person in the league. But you know, like I said, a couple players like I'm gonna do from our league might get some for Easter. Get on and buy some hats. You can see some team hats next year, randomly. It's not like everybody's going to have them, but yeah, that's, that's a cool idea, I think. Reason I'm definitely going to get those. Reason that. Not. I was thinking, are we going to do, like, when you grab somebody, they're going to walk up and shake their hand? We, we do could that. do that. We that's do that. what I think. Should we keep, comment down below if we should keep all the players after the prospect game yeah. there for yeah. the draft? Yeah. yeah. The other thing with that is it's tough to, like, I guess – for somebody that gets drafted ninth or 10th to just be like, rather there, say, in the last pick is. But, you know, I think it would be a cool idea. It's something that could definitely be yeah, debated here in these next couple the weeks. There. What? All the managers of the team should be there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be there. Jace will be there. Ruben will be there. Oh, dude, everybody in the league is going to be there for the prospect game. I mean, I'm going to be there. Benny will be there. I don't know about Tucker. All the rookies. Ethan will be there. Jace will be there. Max will be there. Cole will be there. Ruben will be there. Jackson will be there. Everybody's going to be there. There's probably going to be... There might even be two or three players in our whole league that will not be there. Just guys can't make it or whatever. But it's going to be a fun day. Um. Yeah, it's, it's almost that time. I can't believe it's... It's been a long off season. I'm ready. I need to get my hitting better. I, when I was hitting lately, it's been rough. I need to practice my hitting. Yeah, you bent my you bent my back because you popped out and then it's landed on the ground. It has a big yeah. The bat has a bend in it because I popped out or something and smashed the bat off the ground. I think the Preds were definitely the most rage worthy team last year. 
I smashed my bat off the ground. I bet like two bats from smashing them off the ground last year. Two or three. You took bats numerous times last year. Max hit me with the bat. Max hit me, Vincent with the bat by chucking it. Actually, I was just watching a video back the other day. Preds versus Seahawks, and Max had a bat after he struck out and chucked it, chucked it, and almost hit Jackson in the leg. Yeah, I'd say the Preds were definitely the most rage-worthy team last year. I don't think it's going to be that way this year because a we're what last year we kind of disappointed what we thought we could be. This year we're going to be, I think, the team we think we can be. We're not going to have as much to rage about, and me and Vinny were not. No offense, Max. We know you're watching this, but. We're not as big of rage monsters as you were last year. Max is a supreme rage monster in the league. And that, that, that's half why you won Comedian of the Year. So, hold up. I don't know how many minutes we're at, but we're going to wrap this up here. Yep, 30. Vinny, any last words to the fans? We'll see you next month. What all you got to say? Nothing too much? For three months in a row, this is what I said. It's going to stay that way. Vinny's Pizza de ya! Oh, hold up. Before we go, Vinny, Vinny. This was a joke earlier on in the podcast months. What do you have to say real quick about the joke about you having a kid even though you don't? You're just ready to win a World Series, right, Vinny? Yep. All right. Hey, last podcast. It's season time, baby. Thank you guys all, all season for watching these. And literally in three or four weeks, it's time. Prospect game. Last podcast. We'll Drink see you guys world. in this place. Next podcast you'll see is in like 11 months, 10 months. I don't know. We'll see you guys. We're out. Peace.